Hello, this is Buffy, and I just wanted to go over a new movie that just came out over the weekend of this weekend, uh, the 23rd of October. Um, the name of the movie I'm talking about tonight is about The Last Witch Hunter. It's, uh, the actor is yeah, Van Diesel, and of course we have one of our other actor, if you have not recognized him or if you ha know of him, his name is Elijah, uh, Elijah Wood. I do have my notes in front of me just to get you uh, the idea that I do get my making sure that I get this delivered to you as best I can. I also want to let you know that this movie has budgeted out over $90 million and now over since last yesterday, the Friday the, uh, the 23rd, has now made over $3.8 million. It's not counting the rest of the weekend. So um. I'm not sure if this movie has uh, made at the uh, peak of their uh, budget or is not going to make it to the budget depending on how far people are going to see this. I do want to mention about this movie. Uh, when I saw it earlier today, I just like, this is not the movie that, uh, it is PG-13, uh, just to make sure I get that clear. But I wasn't sure if this is the kind that your kids like. 12 and under really appreciate the movie and don't understand they may just get tired and fall asleep. So this is probably a better movie for a 12 and over uh, movie that can actually sit there and really feel, uh, focus into the story because sometimes you get points that you feel like you get lost and and you, and you just totally um, try to get back to it. I have had some drifting points and I can tell you that uh, honestly. Um, also, that this movie has, um, I mean, it's relatively great. Uh, it's based in New York, um, but also it goes way back in the era of 800 years that this, um, the lead uh, actor, Van Diesel, um, has been, ran into the, uh, the Queen Witch, and she uh, cursed him to the internal light. That's, I don't want to give a lot of, you know, spoiler away. I mean, this is pretty well a cut and dry movie. Um, and then, of course, all he was trying to do is try to uh, track down this uh, queen who passed on this um, uh, the curse forever. Well, as time goes on, I'm not sure. Uh, I cannot tell you if he or did or didn't kill um, the actual queen because that kind of like is left in the hanging. I'm not sure if there's part two will kind of uh, go into the full ending of that because I kind of felt there was a cliffhanger at the end of the movie just kind of give you a brush up then maybe another I'm not too sure it may happen also I would do want to give you the fun fact that when Van Diesel has uh, did this movie um, he had to step away for a while because uh, in honor and God rest his soul uh, Paul Walker he had to take time off to go in his uh, you know to be there, you know, support and the funeral and everything else and uh, for Fast Furious 7. And so Van Diesel had to take some time off personally to uh, put this movie on hold until, you know, he got himself back to rejuvenate and he got right back into the movie again. Um, I have to give him a lot of credit because if he's gone from the Fast Furious 7 and then into this movie next, you know, and then he, uh, uh, then this, you know, tragedy happened in between with, you know, uh, Paul Walker's, um, God rest his soul, uh, passed away after, uh, in the mid of the, uh, the filming of Fast Free 7 and then into this movie, The Wit of the Last Witch Hunt. Um, I have to give him a lot of credit because this has got to be the hardest thing to do as a actor, but yet you have to leave your personal life at home and then going on set and getting this back on and getting right back into the whole thing. Oh, you have to act. You've got to do this. And so I have to give a lot of credit for that. Um, overall, I mean, this movie has really has touched the points. It's got some, you know, um, as my point of view, I think that needs a little bit more. I don't know. There's something that's missing. And I... I, you know, I, I'm so used to watching Van Diesel in action movie. This is a more like a complete drama. Um, not so much of an action because there's not, uh, there's more of a storytelling rather than action scenes that you just kind of get in there and like you used to. I'm so used to seeing them in you know, Fast Furious 7. Well, and this is a more like a low-key uh, action that he's normally doing. 
So I have to give my personal point of view that it is a more of a drama based and it's more of a, a storytelling. Where is this guy coming from? He's trying to get his um, going back in the past, trying to find out what happened to him because he's got to remember he's over 800 years old and he's been cursed with this thing. I got to say he looks pretty good for 800 years old. <laughs> What do you like that for, for yourself if you had been, um, you know, uh, you know, lived for eternal life? I think it would be kind of nice, wouldn't it? Uh, I mean, you know, with Ben Diesel, he looks great uh, as a, a, a character in the movie as 800-year-old guy who, yeah, uh, stayed until young looking and he just looks great. Would you imagine what he looks like if he was 800 years old and he did not age at all? Just something to think about. So, other than that fact is, this is a very cut and dry short uh, thing about this movie that I can tell you that it is practically done, um, you know, it's done in New York. Uh, you know, I'm not going to give it too much of a plot away because it, I don't want to give any spoiler alert or uh, going into the spoiler. I can tell you that he uh, practically uh, teams up with about maybe two, about two or uh, people, uh, close to three uh, uh, in the story. And tactically, tactically, as the last witch hunt, he usually is the one who does uh, the hunt by himself, solo. So now that he learns to accept the idea of taking on a couple more help, like, you know, um, one of the, uh, the priest and then this other uh, dreamwalker. I'm not going to uh, kind of give away too much. But yeah, she is, a, a, there's a female that comes in to help him. So they kind of team up. And then he had to learn to accept that, all right, he needs help. He needs to go out and find this, you know, uh, his, you know, demon or whoever he's trying to go after as far as the witch. And and it's a very, um, kind of like a, 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 you know, it's like a gothic kind of a base story, but it's not, you know, uh, it's not a lot of, um, you know, it's not a lot, you know, like, you know, like vampires, you know, anything like witch. Yeah, it, you know, it's all they do is pass spells here and there. But I mean, it's not really, you know, a lot of ritual, if you could say, in it. But I can tell you, it is pretty well done. It's up to your, uh, up to you to go see it yourself. And you know, I can tell you, uh, based on my review on reading in this, uh, you know, uh, notes that the audience gave the this movie itself a B minus, and I will have to agree with them. It is a B minus overall. Um, and then on top of that, uh, I can give the cast a different grade and crew. I'll give them all an A, A plus, uh, for their effort and executing the story that they need to. Um, they have done a wonderful job with the wardrobe, makeup, and decor of anywhere that they've done. And I have to say, I was very impressed on some of the decors that they used. And I liked some of the, you know, the, uh, uh, very antique, uh, stuff, especially this one lamp in this, uh, in this movie. I can tell you that I will never forget. Yeah, it looks like it's a, it's a white lamp and it's on the desk and it's got like a little cross on the shades all the way around. And that's the only memorable part I can just, can still see the impression from that movie that kind of sucks me in. And then there's a door that, uh, in that movie that, you know, he has to use a key, which is his ring, to open. And then it opens up to a whole new weapons. You'll have to go see for yourself to uh, see what that is. <laughs> but I can tell you what it is. But yeah, it, it, it's, it's some of the things that it, it's set design is wonderful. I mean, they have done a great job as far as, you know, uh, anything uh, that they've done on set is wonderful. I think they picked the right genre. Uh, you know, the areas that the film is based in is perfect. And then they open it movie with the snow. I'm going, first thought I saw, I said, it's like, you're... Oh, great. It's a winner starting a movie. All right. We'll see how this goes. I'm not really huge fans of the, the, the winter kind of, you know, uh, movie because every time I watch it, I feel like I'm cold all the time. But and then it kind of got out of it real fast. And I do want to mention about if you, those of you remember Elijah, you know, Elijah Wood, he's the same guy who also played in Miss Congeniology, the first movie. And... He's the one who trained, you know, the, the main actress, Sandra Bullock, uh, to become a beauty queen and going on, you know, on stage to become, you know, you know, be crowned the uh, Miss, you know, America, whatever. 
And um, so that kind of gives you an idea that one of the good reasons, if you really are his fan, that's probably a good reason to go see is because he has done an excellent job as, you know, as himself in this movie. So that's another good point to bring up to you. Other than that fact, that I can tell you that the overall this movie is B minus, like everybody else says in my um, my notes here, and I will um, have to take their word over it. And it's just about the same. If I were doing the same thing, I would probably. Uh, they did their. Uh, they, this is like probably done in the college phase where they kind of rate the movies before we see it, and which I had a pl uh, pl uh, privilege to do that one time with one movies uh, back then. Uh, and overall, I agree with uh, every, every audience that are in this note saying the same thing. It is a pretty much a B minus. Other than the fact that it's uh, at your discretion to just see it yourself and see what you can give yourself a grade, uh, give the movie a grade. So it's up to you. Other than the fact is, I thank you all for watching um, my review for the movie of The Last Witch Hunter. And my name is, again is Buffy. And I am hoping that you all can... Uh, can take my word as helpful and, uh, and exciting that this is something that will kind of get you uh, uh, to understand what you're expecting when you go into the movie. I don't know, I will not the type of person that likes to give a lot of things away, so you have to go see for yourself. Um, other than that, you know where to follow me, uh, and you can hit comment, like, the subscribe, see, uh, is all down there. Go ahead and please do any of those if you can for me, please. And, of course, you can follow me on all the other icons you see right there on your, uh, yeah, right there next to my video <laughs> uh, on my channel. And that's uh, and basically, I am Buffy Pribble, and my channel up right on YouTube. And, of course, I'm on Instagram fa uh, and Facebook and Twitter. That's where else you can find me as well. And, any um, you know, thumbs up, thumbs down, I don't care. It's all great. Uh, results and I know that you have watched this video. Either way, I'll look at it as positive. So, keep going what you're doing and I excite, uh, I'm so thankful that you all have watched this movie and I hope I have helped you out to uh, give you the idea of go please go see the movie. Um, you don't know if you don't see it. You know, I'm not to, here to tell, uh, talk bad about any movies I see. I'm just going to give you some of the good qualities from the movies but not the negatives. So, it's up to you to go see it. And I will be coming in with more other new ones that comes out. So please stay tuned for those. All right. Thank you all. And have a wonderful night and day. All right. Bye-bye.